So how do you fight for love in a world full of hate? One of the things that is critically important is that as often as we accumulate wrongs done both to us and done to those we care about, we have to engage in biblical forgiveness. And biblical forgiveness is not as deeply understood or practiced as it could be because we don't entirely understand that we have unforgiveness. If you ask a Christian, who do you need to forgive, their self-righteousness kicks in and we say something like, me? No, I love everybody. If you ask us, well, who hurt you? We got a list. <laughs> it's a trick question. The people who, when I say who hurt you, their names drop immediately into the forefront of your consciousness. Or, who ticks you off? Boom, we got a list. Who hurts you? Who ticks you off? Wham! Whole bunch of people and issues and causes and groups. I've often said, until you have forgiven someone, you're not ready to confront someone. Until you're walking in love, you're not equipped to be able to help them out of the problem they're in. So, real quick, biblical forgiveness is not excusing sin and it is not sweeping sin under the rug. I had a friend who her husband would cheat on her by going out to clubs on the weekend and, I don't know, hooking up with girls. And she said, but I just choose to forgive him. Well, her forgiveness wasn't really forgiveness. It wasn't biblical forgiveness. It was just excusing his poor behavior, demonstrating she had no real value for herself and didn't think she could live without him. Biblical forgiveness is first and foremost allowing God, allowing Jesus, allowing the Holy Spirit to come bring comfort in the place of our pain, experiencing God's love and comfort in the place of our pain, and then, when we're ready, clearly condemning and expressing to Him the wrong that was done with all the emotion and very specifically. So biblical forgiveness is first and foremost condemning what was done wrong. And I think it works best if we first allow God to let His love and comfort pour into that place of pain so that we can trust God as the surgeon because He's the surgeon. He's the physician who brings healing to our heart. So first we're condemning what was done as emotionally, honestly, and precisely and specifically as we can. And it might take a while. God, I forgive so and so for, fill in the blank. More, God, I forgive them for this, and what else? And God, I forgive them for this, and for doing this, and for doing this, and for doing this. And then, after clearly stating and condemning the wrong done, we hand them over to God for Him to be the judge. We give over our right to punish completely to God, and we give up our right to withhold love from them. Now, that doesn't mean we might not set up a boundary to keep from being repeatedly sinned against by a cycle. That's not what I'm talking about at all. But, but biblical forgiveness is clearly condemning the wrong done and then giving up the right to punish them or withhold love. That's what it is. And I find that if we can do that, then we can be warriors for life and love in the midst of a broken world. Love's our superpower. We dare not try to be defeat a monster by becoming a monster. Unless we can pray, Father, forgive them, they don't know what they're doing. We've lost sight of truth.